All right, we are now joined by Matt Tift, driver of the number 18 NOS Energy Drink Toyota in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Matt, big news this morning. As Joe Gibbs Racing announced, you'll be running full-time for the team next season. Talk about the opportunity and what it means to you. Yeah, it's an uh, incredible opportunity. I, you know, the crazy thing is I remember uh, a couple months ago just coming to, to Bristol to do the press conference about trying to get back in the car. So it's, it's so cool to be sitting here today and um, announcing our plans for next year and being full time. And, um, you know, the Joe Gibbs Racing organization was so great through everything I went through. And we've had some good runs together. And it's just it's going to be an awesome opportunity to be able to race with them week in, week out. And it'll be my first uh, full season in NASCAR competition. So, um, you know, it'll definitely be a, a rewarding thing for me because I feel like I can grow a lot as a driver with all the, um, you know, the information JGR gives me and, and relying on our teammates and just uh, that ability to race in and out every week and go contend for the Rookie of the Year and uh, hopefully end up at Homestead too. All right. And with that, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. We'll start with Chris Knight and then go to Lewis and Daniel. Chris Knight, GetTrends.com. Um, Matt, I know that you got your Xfinity Series plan set for 2017, but where does that leave your truck program, if any at all? Uh, we're, we still haven't figured that one out yet. So we've just been uh, we've been working on this, but obviously uh, we've had a great partnership with Red Horse Racing and racing with them tonight, and um, you know that's uh, we'll continue to work that one out. All right, okay. we'll go to Lewis over here to your right, Lewis Frank Reuters. Uh, forgive me if this is old news, but since your operation, I mean, when people break their bones, they get physical therapy. What kind of, did you have any regimen post-op, and is there anything that you have to do these days to stay in good shape? Yeah, it's it's still a, a very real thing in, in my life. I'm, you know, I, uh, last week I went up for my, my eight-week checkup MRIs, and it went well, by the way. Um, so, you know, I, I still have to do that kind of stuff, and it's still a reminder of, of the things I, I have to go through. I have to put a, um, you know, we have a really cool sponsor in Surface Sunscreen, but uh, surfers, they have this little rectangle, uh, you know, zinc stick that they put on their nose, but I can put it right on my scar, so it's, you know, it's pretty cool how, how that works. But, um, you know, it's just, it's a, it's amazing to look back and see every month how much it progresses, and it'll continue to do that, but, um you know, in the beginning, I had to do a lot of, and still I'll do like brain games, you know, just going online and playing on different websites and just trying to keep my, my brain active. And they said that's the best thing is just to keep doing that and keep it um, healthy that way, just constantly thinking instead of just, you know, watching TV or something. All right, we'll go to Daniel next. Daniel McFadden, NBC Sports. Do you know what number you'll be driving uh, next year? And also, what's, what are you going to have to do in order to get prepared for just the week in, week out, all year long toll that a full time season could take on a driver. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we uh, we're still working on the number, and um, we'll uh, we'll probably have an announcement with that in, in time to come. Uh, just you know, no timeline on that yet. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's something I've thought about as a driver because I've I haven't done that. The good thing is, you know, the last couple of years I've done about. 26 to 30 races a year um, they just haven't all been grouped together like the Xfinity schedule has it so um, you know it'll just be making sure of the off season I get uh, prepared with training and everything and then just uh, you know the cool thing about working with JGR and, and the great thing about them is that they really give me the resources for every week to prepare um, you know with more than enough information for myself and and you know just relying on the relationships I'll have and um, you know with my crew chief as well uh, being able to actually race week in week out and work with my guys every week that'll be huge so um, you know I know it's gonna be a lot more maybe taxing on me but um, you know it's what I've always wanted to do so I'm not gonna complain about it all right we'll go to Jim Stan and then up front Jim Hunter, motorsport.com. Matt, uh, the full-time ride, was that something that you guys were talking about before uh, your surgery, or has it kind of developed uh, since then, since you've been able to get out and uh, be competitive again and, and actually see what you've been able to do on the racetrack? It's hard to say exactly when it started. Um, you know, when we started this year with the 13 race schedule, in my mind, um, you know, my job was to go out and perform and show that I could race with my teammates and, um, you know, learn as much as I could, but with the ultimate goal of hopefully being able to move in a full-time role. And, you know, 
probably towards the time that it started happening uh, or that the you know health issue started to come up was probably when it first started talking about it. Um, and then, you know, obviously this stuff kind of got put on the back burner. So, um, you know, now that we've been able to get back in the car and get some good runs again, uh, it's that's when we started really seriously talking about it. All right, we'll go to Stan and then up front. Matt, Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. What is the greatest thing you've learned about racing since you returned? Uh, how much I love it. You know, I think I remember um, in July, s probably two or three weeks after surgery, and it was incredible to me how much it had, my perspective on life had changed because, um, you know, I remember watching races on TV and when I first started going through these things and I had to, you know, miss a race for the, uh, for the back issue at Iowa, I was like, man, I really want to be out there. And then I remember sitting uh, at home in July thinking, I have no idea, you know, what my future entails for me. I didn't know, I didn't know if I could drive a street car. I didn't know when that timeline was going to be. I didn't know if I was going to drive a race car this year, next year, whenever. Um, but, you know, I just definitely kept the, the faith in myself that I could get back to that point. That's what kept me motivated the whole time. But, um, you know, without the support of family and friends and that motivation to get back to racing, I don't know how quick my recovery time would have been. And um, obviously it's different for every person. But I think that, you know, when I had to step out of that car and almost had what I loved so much and wanted to do since I was five years old taken away from me, it made me appreciate it so much more now that I'm stepping back into that role as a race car driver. All right, we'll go to Bob next. Uh, Bob Pockris, ESPN. Um, you've been working with a lot of different partners this year, so I, should we assume that maybe some of your partners are coming with you, and how hard have you been working um, off the track to secure partnerships to be able to, uh, you know, help kind of motivate Gibbs to put you in a car? Yeah, we're, um, you know, we're still working with all our partners on finalizing things for next year, and, um, you know, obviously with, the biggest thing being with this announcement coming out, it, it's uh, it's a lot better sales pitch to uh, those partners that we've been working with and moving forward. So uh, we'll continue those and uh, we'll continue the sponsorship talks uh, in new ones as well. It's just, you know, this is our sport now is an ever evolving sponsorship cycle. So um, we're always trying to find new ways and how to bring in new partners and keep the old ones that we have. So uh, we'll keep on working on it through the off season. That'll be our biggest next task after Homestead. All right, we'll go to Wolfgang and then Daniel. Uh, Wolfgang Monza from Germany, Rangeport Press Agency. You said earlier, if I understood correctly, you were not sure after your medical treatment if you ever can return to a race car or can drive a private road car. Do you have an emergency plan? I mean, fortunately, it worked out positive for you. But in case not, you have an emergency plan then or a second plan in case you could not return to a race car? You know, uh, it's, it's a good question, but I'll say that when... I got done with my surgery. It was, I think our, I went in about three o'clock and I remember about eight o'clock getting done with it or the, the clock said 7.51. And they told me I would be there for three or four days, um, you know, just admitted in the hospital. And I got through a lot of things and got eating by midnight that night. And I remember asking the next morning, I asked the nurse for a checklist of what do you need to get out of this hospital? And um, you know, just wanting to get done with everything, get back to home. And uh, instead of waiting the three days, I got out less than 24 hours later uh, from brain surgery. And that motivation that I had ever since then, I never thought in my mind that I wasn't going to do this. It wasn't a, you know, I thought maybe it's going to take a long time or I didn't know when the timing would be, but the whole time I was planning on getting back in the car. And that's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a very tough thing to go through, and I'm not sure how I would have reacted without having the racing piece of it and um, being able to help others who are going uh, through that as well. So, um, you know, it was a very strange and, and tough uh, process for me to go to, but, um, you know, I, I never started looking for different routes to go. I just always wanted to be back in the car. All right, we'll finish up with Daniel. Uh First, back in uh, September, which was two months after your surgery, you, you told me that you could still feel your brain rewiring. Is, is that still still the case? And uh, also, uh, how hard was, was it for you to watch Game 7 of the World Series uh, Wednesday night? I knew somebody would bring that up. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely interesting how the brain uh, 
heals and fixes itself. You know, the question earlier about the physical therapy of, um, you know, with a normal broken bone compared to your brain, I just had to keep forcing myself to get out and be active and, and just, um, even though that doesn't seem to do anything physically, uh, mentally, those new experiences kept on uh, helping my brain heal and, and ultimately, you know, support itself before I could do something with the adrenaline rush of stepping in a race car. So um, today, no, not so much. Um, there, there might be a couple of times where it just does it a little bit, but it's, uh, I mean, maybe 5% you know, at most, and that's if it ever does it. So it's uh, it's pretty much set now. And uh, to your other question, I um, you know I'm I'm a huge Cleveland sports fan. If anybody knows me, they they know that about me. So I I went to the um, ALCS game a week before that, and um, you know what? They had I think three or four of their best players and pitchers, and uh, Michael Brantley, their outfielder, who was you know, one of our strongest hitters that was out for the whole season. So they got a bunch of guys coming back for the next few years. So I think the Indians are going to get a World Series here pretty soon. So I'm not too worried about it. All right, Matt, thanks for joining us this weekend and good luck. All right, thank you guys.